Hello, children. Good morning to you all. I'm Uncle Jones, and I trust you all are doing great. Okay, so today we have an exciting topic to talk about, titled Jesus is God. Before we run through the slide, let's go, let's remind ourselves of our identity. All right, and I'll read it through. I am wonderfully made. I am fearfully made. I know my identity. I'm a child of God. I'm creative. I'm full of ideas. I'm not a slave to fear. I'm bold. I'm a soldier in the Lord's army. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. All right. So last week we had, uh, we talked about prophecy, right? The, the gift of prophecy. So let's do a recap on it. Prophecy is the supernatural ability of the Holy Spirit to give a message from God. Prophecy is in parts. Not everything is revealed to us. We should be aware of false prophets and test all spirits. Prophet Agabus told the believers in the Roman kingdom of the famine that, is, that was to come. This helped them plan. Prophet Micah prophesied to King Ahab about the disaster that awaits him if he went to war. But the king ignored the message and he died on the battlefield. This week, we will be learning about Jesus, the second person in the Trinity. So now we are on to our topic for today. Jesus is God. The question we should ask ourselves is, who is this Jesus? I believe everybody have heard of that name before. Of course, everybody has. Oh, but do we really know who Jesus is? That is what we are about to learn now. Who Jesus really is. Some say Jesus Christ was just a man or maybe a great teacher, but he was and is much more than that. The Bible says Jesus is unique in both his person and his purpose. He wasn't just some spiritual individual during his time on earth. He was both God's son and God himself. God in human flesh. That's I'll repeat that. God in human flesh. Yes, he was fully man, but he was also fully God. Okay, I'll, I'll drop some scriptures that we will read uh, and to portray this point that we just read on the slide. The first scripture is John 3, 16. Can we open our Bibles to John 3, 16? All right. Real quick, John 3, 16. Okay, I'm there now. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Wow. That scripture, by the way, every scripture is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so it was. this was John one of the disciples of Jesus that was inspired to write this down for us to know that Jesus is truly the Son of God and He is our pathway, is our channel to having everlasting life. What that means is that we will live forever and ever. Wow! Isn't that exciting? Well, I guess some of you have lost your grandma, have lost your grandpa. So, won't it be exciting to know that you can still see them someday, that they will still live someday? Yes. So, the the key or the pathway for that to happen, it's in John three sixteen, and it's simple. Believe in Jesus. Believe in the Son of God. As simple as that. Just believe. Wow. Okay. So let's look at the next scripture we are going to um, talk read now. 
First Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. All right, I'll read it now. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angel, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. Wow. God was manifested in flesh. That means that God, the creator of the universe, was actually born like every one of us. That's what it means. He had flesh. He had a feeling. He had a hand. He had, a, he had, he had eyes. He had legs. He walked this earth just like we are doing. But he is God, the creator of the earth. That's that's magnificent. And that person is Jesus. So let's look at another scripture real quick. So that would be Colossians 2 verse 9. I'll read it now. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. I'll read it again. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in human body that means jesus was fully god wonderful so it wasn't he wasn't just um, a type of god or sometimes god he was fully god that means that the people that were privileged to touch the hands of jesus actually touched the hands of god isn't that so interesting to know wow okay now let's look at what we have on our next slide. We are encouraged to always recite our identity. I'm fearfully made. I'm wonderfully made. I know my identity. Yeah, it's really important we do that because Jesus was one individual or one human who understood his identity. What that means is that Jesus knew who he really was. And that's why he was so bold about it, talking about it, regardless of who believes him or not, or who is offended. Yeah? Jesus claimed to be God. It might be hard to understand how this could be true, but it's important to remember that God is much bigger and more powerful than we can comprehend. We do know that Jesus said he existed before Abraham. Wow. He claimed that he and his father are one and that he is equal with the father. Wow. I, I, I think we should just go straight into looking the scripture. John 8 verse 58. Let's confirm what the scripture says. John 8 verse 58. Who, is anybody there already? All right, I'm there. Let me read now. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am the one. I am the one. Wow. The Abraham is like our grand, 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 grand great, grand, grandpa. You know, so Jesus was actually using him to explain to the people to understand that he created Abraham. So before even Abraham existed, he was existing and the people could not understand. They would just be like, but you're human. We could see you. How can you be God? You know, but Jesus knew that he was really God and he understood his identity and he was so bold about it every time he speaks. So I think we should learn something from that. So we should be so bold about our identity. So when we go out, we are telling people, I am fearfully made. I am wonderfully made. I know my identity. I am a child of God. I am creative. I am full of ideas. I am not a slave to fear. You know, you just have to keep saying that boldly, boldly, because that is who you are. And that is your identity, just like how Jesus did. All right, let's look at the next slide and see what we have there. So still talking about identity, it's important you all know this, children. Your identity affirmation shouldn't only be in words, 
but also in your action. That means you have to act like who you say you are. So if you say you are bold, you have to act like a bold person. And bold people are not shy. Likewise, Jesus. Jesus was always proving to be who he said he was. Claiming to be something as Jesus claimed to be God doesn't make it true. Where's the evidence that he is God? Jesus' identity isn't solely based on what he says, but on what he does. And he has left a lot of evidence that he is God. That evidence includes fulfilled prophecy and recorded miracles in which Jesus reversed the laws of nature. He turned water into wine at a wedding in Canaan of Galilee. That was, that was one miracle he did that wowed people turning water into wine. It was impossible with man. So that was a proof that he is God and he is what he says he is. Another one was when he walked on water. Another occasion where Jesus reversed the law of, the law of nature was when he walked on water. The story recorded in the book of Matthew 14, 22 to 23. We won't have time, we would have read the story, but I believe a lot of us already know the story. Peter even asked Jesus to make him walk on water, and Jesus did. Now, let's look at what we have on the next slide. So Our next slide is still talking about more claims Jesus made by himself, about him being God. He claimed he has the power of God. He claimed he has the authority to judge the nations. He claims the authority to raise people from the dead and to forgive sins. Frankly, children, these are things only God can do. No man can forgive sins. No man can have the power of God. Okay, so another proof was where Jesus entered the temple and drove all those that were buying and selling in the temple and overturned the table of the money changers and the seats of those who sold dove. Jesus exclaimed, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of robbers? Jesus was actually referring to the temple, which today we, we can call it the church. But back then, the temple was referred to or was seen as the dwelling place of God. But Jesus called it his house. So it literally means that he was saying, I am God and this is my house. Another powerful proof was when Jesus raised Lazarus to life. I want to believe a lot of us already know that story. Jesus raised Lazarus to life after being dead for three days. Again, that was so powerful. And indeed, it was only God who had that ability to do such a miracle. And the people were so astonished. So, another instance was when Jesus answered the prayer of a blind man on the street. The blind man shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. It is also very interesting to know that Jesus lived a sinless life. That means he never committed any sin. He, he never told a lie. He never stole. Name it, no sin at all. And that is so impossible with men because we are bound to sin in one way or the other. Remember the scripture that says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus was found with no sin at any point in time. The ultimate proof of his divinity, however, was the resurrection from the dead after his death on the cross. No one else has ever risen from the dead on his own. Now, the next question someone may ask is, did Jesus ever say, I am God? Hmm. If someone said to you, I am God, would you believe him? 
Many people who believe in what God would think the person is blaspheming. Even Jesus said the exact words that I am God. Many people will still not have believed him. Yes, he gave us reasons to believe such a claim. In Luke 8 verse 4 verse 8, Jesus said, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. He said and showed many times that he is the Lord. Jesus says, for example, that he is the first and the last, which God the Father says in Isaiah 44, verse 6. Wow. Now, let, let's look at Isaiah 44, verse 6. There already, and I will just read. This is what the Lord says, Israel, King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty, I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. So, Isaiah was one of the prophets of Israel. So, the prophet back then were the ones who have access to God, to hear from God directly and say to the people. So, Isaiah was telling the people of Israel that this is what the Lord is saying, that apart from him, there is no other God. And Jesus also made that same claim. Now, let's go to our next slide. Jesus is God. But maybe you are looking for a place in the Bible where Jesus said, I am God, worship me in those exact words. If we suggest that Jesus could only claim to be God by saying that one sentence, we may also ask where he says, I am a great teacher, but not God. Or, I am just a prophet. Don't worship me. The Bible doesn't say that either. The good news is that Jesus told us he is God in many different ways. He has made it clear that he and God the Father are one. And says in John 14 verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. Who else could claim these things except God? The answer is nobody. So in conclusion, the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is God and there are many reasons we can trust the Bible. If you're curious about Jesus or what the Bible says about him, read the book of John in the Bible. It's a great place to start. Now we are on to our memory verse. John 10, 30. Our memory verse is taken from the book of John chapter 10, verse 30, and it says, I and the Father are one. I will say that again. Our memory verse is taken from the book of John chapter 10, verse 30, and it says, I and the Father are one. So, children, I hope we all learned something today. So, until we meet again, Bye, everyone. Bye. I have a question. Who is Jesus? The simple answer is that Jesus is the Son of God. Another way to say it, He is God, the Son. Colossians 1, 15 and 16 says the Son is the exact likeness of God, who can't be seen. The Son is first, and He is over all of creation. All things were created in Him. Just like God the Father, Jesus has always existed, and He will never end. What did Jesus do when He came to Earth? Well, He did lots of human things, like eating and sleeping and hanging out with people. He also performed miracles, like healing sick people and giving sight to the blind. He showed everyone the truth about our relationship with God the Father. Genesis 1.27 tells us that we are created in God's own likeness. But sometimes we do things that go against God's will. That's called sin, and it separates us from God. Jesus was perfect and never sinned. He died on the cross to take the punishment for our sin. 
Then he rose on the third day to reign as king over everything. And all of this was part of God's plan to save us. Understanding who Jesus is and believing in him is the most important thing we can do. Uh -huh. Jesus is God the Son. He is the only way to eternal life. And he is the one who loves us, teaches us, and guides us in all that we do. We have friends all over the world who love Jesus and call Him their Lord. But there are also millions of people who don't know. So come on, let's tell them that Jesus Christ is the Lord of all. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all. Let's hear it! Jesus Christ is the Lord of all! 